for this video, we will have an example of a problem involving projectile motion. We have here a problem. Initial velocity is 60 feet per second. We have three cases. Case 1 would be the angle of lunge is 0 degrees from the horizontal. Its initial height is 10 feet from the ground. Case 2 would be the angle of lunge is 60 degrees from the horizontal. Case 3, angle of lunge is 60 degrees from the horizontal. The initial height is 10 feet from the ground. And for each case, we are going to find the total hang time the maximum height reach and the maximum horizontal range for this problem. So we are given here the equations of motion that are going to use in solving the problem. We must always remember that projectile motion is a combination of free falling bodies and a horizontal uniformly rectilinear uniform rectilinear motion, meaning its vertical analysis would be analyzed as free falling bodies, wherein we will use this the following equations of motion. And for the horizontal part, there is no acceleration, meaning the velocity is constant. That is why the horizontal component of the velocity will be the same all throughout the duration of the motion. So let's try to solve this problem, starting with case one. Just like in any other problems involving physics, it is very important for us to start our problems or our solutions with drawing the diagram of our problem. So let's try to draw the diagram for us to better visualize this problem. So for case 1, the initial height is 10 feet from the ground. This is the ground. So this initial height would be 10 feet. So the angle of lunge is 0 degrees from the horizontal. Be careful with the conditions of your problems. When it is, whenever they are giving the values of your angles, it should be indicated whether that is measured from the horizontal or from the vertical. If that is measured from the horizontal, let me make this a straight line. Oh. Let's say we have this line. If the angle is measured from the horizontal, this is your horizontal. Positive angle should always be counterclockwise. So this is the angle, theta, let's say, from the horizontal. If the angle is measured from the vertical, meaning it is talking about the angle beta in that case. So be careful when solving this kinds of problem. You should not neglect those statements describing the angle of lunge. So since it is zero degrees, let me just change my marker for better illustration. Okay. So This would be the angle or the trajectory of our projectile motion. You see, when you say trajectory, meaning that is the path that is followed by the object that is undergo undergoing projectile motion. So if initially, you have a ball.
We have a ball here that was hit with a velocity, initial velocity of 60 feet per second and the angle of launch is 0 degrees it will follow this path of motion so this is an example of case 1 of the projectile motion so we have the initial velocity then as v sub i that is our initial velocity from this equation this would be equal to Sixty feet per second. If you will maximize or zoom out this figure, it will look like this one. You have your line. This is the ball. and the path so this is the initial velocity and the angle of launch is 0 degrees so if that is 0 degrees it does not have a vertical component for the initial velocity meaning this v sub i is equal to v sub i in the x axis let's say we will let us try to have an A drawing for the axis. This would be your y axis. Let me use a different, different marker. That would be your y-axis. And we have our x-axis straight This is our x-axis. So if you will see, the initial velocity coincides or is collinear with the x-axis, meaning there is no vertical component of the initial velocity. As we can say, we will continue.
the first thing that we are asked is the first item that we are asked to find is a total hang time. So for case one, we can use the horizontal or the vertical analysis. So let's try first to solve it using the vertical analysis. So for the vertical analysis, the acceleration is always due to gravity. Similar with free falling bodies. Because projectile motion does not have any power of its own when it is moving in its trajectory. So, for the vertical analysis, we can use these formulas for the free falling body or vertical analysis part. If you will notice, the maximum height that this ball will be from the ground is already its initial height since it will not move at an angle with respect to the horizontal from the x-axis, it will not be having any other height that is greater than its initial height. So, its initial height is already the maximum height reached. So, we have already an answer for number 2, which is y max. Okay, so continuing, we have our y max. The maximum height reach is equal to 10 feet. We don't have a problem with that already. And... In terms of the axis, let's say this is our original position. It is moving in the x-axis because we are considering the vertical components of our, or the vertical analysis. We are doing first the, the vertical analysis. So let's say that this is the original position of y. y sub o is equal to 0 using the Cartesian coordinate system. And your y at this point, since that is below the original position from your Cartesian plane, this is negative 10. So if you will use this formula, we have the initial velocity for the vertical. We also know the acceleration and that is due to gravity. We can solve for the time. The formula would be from the equations of motion, S is equal to S sub O plus initial velocity times time plus one half of acceleration times time squared. So since we are considering the vertical part, let's just change this to Y is equal to Y sub O plus initial velocity at the x compo at the vertical part we sub i y times time plus one half g t squared we considered a positive gravitational acceleration because its initial velocity at the vertical component is zero and by the time that it will reach this point at the ground it is it will have an initial velocity at the vertical component which is greater than zero so it is accelerating it is increasing its value in magnitude 
So we have here y minus y sub o is equal to v sub i y, this is 0, times the time plus 1 half thirty two point two feet per second squared that is the gravitational acceleration in terms of the English system and we have the time to go down this is squared this is also the time to go down but then since we are going to multiply it by zero let's just cancel this out so we have our formula So our y here is, since it is below the original position, this is equal to negative 10. But take note that ne that negative value is only describing the position. So this is also only for the position of the object. So negative 10 is equal to 1 half 32.2 feet per second squared. This is the time to go down and that is squared. Cross multiply. Let us just remove the negative value because it is just describing the position of the object or the direction so let that is simply 10 times 2 divided by 32.2 that is equal to the time to go down and the square root of both sides of the equation if you take the square root of the time to go down squared you will just cancel out the exponent so, we will have a value for the time to go down. This is equal to the square root of 10 times 2 divided by 32.2. And this is equal to 0 0.788 seconds. Take note that the time to go down is equal to the total hang time for case 1 because the object that is under projectile motion did not went up it is just going down all throughout the duration of the projectile motion so the total long time is also equal to 0 0.788 seconds so this would be the first required value, the total hang time for case 1 is 0.788 seconds. For case 2, or for the second required value, that is the y, the maximum height reach, or y max, that is already given from the problem or from the given, as, as, as I have explained a while ago. And that is equal to 10 feet, or you can say negative 10 feet to say that it is below, or 10 feet below the, the, the original height. So, for the last part, that is the maximum horizontal range, since we are talking about the horizontal range, meaning we are going to, to do a horizontal analysis. And remember, 
for the horizontal analysis part of projectile motion, we are going to consider zero acceleration or constant velocity at the horizontal axis. So, since we know the time, total hang time, or the time to go down for the time for the ball to go down, that is also equal for the time of the ball to travel from this position horizontally going to its final position of this portion. So, considering two positions, the time to go from its initial to its final position, whether it is horizontal or vertical, you are considering is just equal to each other as long as you are considering the same amount of or the same initial and same final position. So for the horizontal analysis, you can say that the velocity is equal to the distance traveled over the time. We are looking up, looking for the distance in the horizontal part. So we can say that the distance is equal to velocity times time. And that is that should be easy because since there is no acceleration, the initial velocity is also equal to final velocity. And that is also equal to the average velocity in the horizontal part. So, d, or we can say x, maximum, is equal to the initial velocity of 60 feet per second multiplied by the total hang time, time to go down, which is 0 0.788 seconds. Notice that the unit of seconds will cancel, leaving you with the unit of feet. So the maximum height reach or the maximum horizontal range would be 60 times 0.788. That would be 47.28 and this is your answer for letter C, the total horizontal range for case 1 of our projectile motion. So that is case 1. Let's now move to case 2 of our projectile motion problem. For case 2, the angle of launch is 60 degrees from the horizontal and its initial height would be at the ground because it is not indicated. So. Let's say we have here our case 2. For case 2, let us draw the figure for better analysis. So let's see that initially the ball is here and it will be launched at an angle of 60 degrees from the horizontal and it should have a trajectory as described by the broken blue lines. Better. 
So that is the initial position of the ball. And after some time, it will be landing on the same level of the ground. And this would be your final position. So it has an angle of or initial velocity. Is of I, 60 feet per second. And that is measured at, at an angle of 60 degrees, that middle stretch. Yeah, 60 degrees from the horizontal. So from the horizontal, we are going to measure 60 degrees. And that should be the angle of lunch for its horizontal component in the initial part e sub i in the x component and this is the vertical component of the velocity v sub i y so for better analysis let us divide the figure into two parts. First, let us have an analysis for the ball or when the ball is going up and it will reach its maximum height at this point. So let's use another call say this one. When the ball will reach its maximum height Let's say that part. It is the time for the ball to go up. And just right after it stops there at the maximum height, it is now time for the ball to go down. Okay? So, let's have... Let's draw first the the first half of our ball. So if this is the ball, then it will go up, it will follow the tra trajectory. until such time that it will reach its maximum height and right after that moment it is now time for the ball to go down following a mirrored trajectory as shown on the figure So this is the final position of the object. So this would be going up and this is going down. this time it will have a horizontal component for the initial velocity and an initial vertical component in the y direction of course following the nature of the resultant velocity and until at this point, this will have let's say final velocity. This is not the 
most final position but then we are since we are dividing it into two parts for better analysis let's just say that this is the final velocity when it will reach its maximum height at the horizontal axis and then the final velocity on the horizon, the vertical axis. And since this will go down, the vertical initial velocity in the y axis now, initial because we are now considering a different motion or a different nature of the direction, it is now going down. So let's just say that this is the initial velocity. And then your horizontal velocity will not change its direction. It is constant. And we have here the final velocity component at the vertical axis and the horizontal velocity final in the x axis so at this point when it will when the ball will reach its maximum height the final velocity will be equal to at the vertical axis is equal to zero same thing here, the initial velocity when it will go down will be equal to zero. And take note that the horizontal velocity is not changing, it is always a constant because there is no acceleration in the horizontal part of our projected motion. And since this initial velocity for the vertical axis or the vertical component will have its value greater than zero, it is accelerating. Right? From a, an initial velocity with a value to an to a final velocity of zero, meaning there is acceleration or deceleration rather, because we are decreasing the value of your velocity. Since that is deceleration, it should have a negative value for the acceleration. And since we are considering free-falling analysis, free-falling body analysis in the vertical components of our projectile motion, that is caused by the gravitational acceleration. For this one, from an initial velocity in the vertical component of zero, going to a final velocity in the vertical component, this should be a positive gravitational acceleration. So, since we are already re now ready to, to analyze, we can solve for the time first to for the ball to go up. So, vertical analysis. Remember, for the vertical analysis, we are doing free falling body analysis. So for this one, similar to the equation that we that we used a while ago, S is equal to S sub O plus V sub I times T plus one half AT squared. Do we have the value of S? Let's just say this is Y, Y sub O plus V I T plus one half AT squared. We don't have the value of the Y or the maximum height that it will reach. Let's say that this is Y sub zero or zero and that this would be the value of y. 
in the vertical analysis. We don't have the value of y. So we cannot use this formula. Let's go back to the formulas that is available for us. We can use the first formula. Let's copy that one. The final velocity or is equal to initial velocity plus a t a times t final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus a t squared but for me I like to write this in this form which is easier for me to memorize acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time interval. They are basically the same. So let's use this one. Final velocity is equal to zero. Initial velocity, that would be 60 feet per second. This is 60 degrees. This is our initial velocity. If you will try to use vector addition, this is a initial velocity equal to 60 feet per second. This is your angle, initial velocity at the x component, and the vertical component of your initial velocity. So to get this one, this should be 60 cosine of 60 degrees plus your acceleration due to gravity that is going up is negative g. So this would be negative 32.2 feet per second squared in the English units times the time for it to go up. Remember that this analysis is for is when the ball is going up. So we have here transpose this to the other side that would be negative 60 cosine of 60 degrees equal to negative 32.2 time to go up cross multiply the negative sign will cancel this would be 60 cosine of 60 divided by 32.2 and that is the time for the ball to go up and this is equal to 60 cosine of 60 divided by 32.2 that should be equal to 0 0.93 2 seconds but that is not the total hang time because the total hang time is considering from this position up to its final position at the same level of the ground that is just the time for the ball to go up we are we need to look for the time for the ball to go down so when it is going down Your intuition will say that they are just the time for it to go up is just equal to the time for it to go down. But let us demonstrate it using the mathematical expressions or formulas that we need to that will be used. So this is also 60 degrees. And if you will use vector addition. This is the final velocity. This is your velocity final at the x direction. And the velocity final on the y component. This is 60 degrees. So, since we are using the vertical component, Vf. So y is equal to 
60 sine of 60 degrees using the, uh, the first formula we have velocity final on the y direction is equal to the velocity initial on the y direction that is plus 80 squared velocity final is 60 sine 60 degrees the vertical component of the initial velocity when it is going down is equal to zero plus that is going down it follows the direction of your gravity so that is positive gravitational acceleration this would be positive 32.2 feet per second squared multiplied by the time for the ball to go down and this is squared so the time for the ball to go down is equal to no this is not squared sorry 60 sine of 60 degrees divide this by I had a mistake a while ago this should be sine sorry about that this is also sine Sixty sine of sixty is the t square root of three or fifty one point ninety six divided by thirty two point two it should be one point six one four seconds. divided by 32.2 it should also be 1.614 seconds so for number or letter A of case 2 the total hang time is equal to the time to go up plus the time to go down and t is equal to 1.614 plus 1.614 seconds t is equal to 3.228 seconds so that is for letter Eight. For the maximum height reach, we can either use this part when it is going up or the other part when it is going down. Basically, they have the same maximum height. So let's try to use the analysis when it is going up. So when it is going up, we can use S is equal to S sub O plus V sub I T plus one half A T squared Y minus Y sub O plus or is equal to V sub I in the Y component times the time to go up plus one half your acceleration is negative G times the time to go up squared going back to your figure your y here is a positive value because that is above the original position in the vertical axis when you are going to consider a Cartesian coordinate or a Cartesian plane in this portion where the origin is the initial position so that is above 
So, the direction will tell, tell us that this is positive. So, this is y, y sub o is 0, is equal to v sub i in the y direction is 60 cosine of 60 degrees. So, you will go back here. This is your horizontal part. Sign, sorry. Sixty sign of sixty degrees times the time to go up is one point six one four seconds. Plus one half of negative 32.2 because this is in the English units the time to go up squared 1.614 squared so the value of y and that is the maximum height reach is equal to 60 sine of 60 times 1.614 plus 0.5 times negative 32.2 times 1.614 the quantity squared should be equal to 41.925 feet so that is the maximum height that it will reach okay This is our answer for letter B of case 2. So the last item that we need to find is the maximum horizontal range. To get that, since the velocity at the horizontal part is constant, we can say that velocity is equal to distance over time, the total time in this case from its original position, going back to your figure, from this position up to this position. So this is your x max. Let me just put some labels. Or let's put it here at the top. That would be x max. This is your y max. So for the maximum horizontal range, velocity is equal to distance over time to get the distance that is equal to x max that is equal to velocity times the time velocity at the horizontal part or the horizontal component of the velocity and the total hang time and this is equal to 60 cosine of 60 degrees feet per second let me just show the cancellation of units. And the time would be 3.228, if I'm not mistaken. That is 1.614 times 2. 3.228 seconds. Second unit will cancel, leaving us with feet. So x max should be equal to 60 cosine of 60 times 3.228 that should be equal to 96.84 feet
Lastly, we have our case 3. For case 3, let us draw the figure. We have our initial height. of 10 feet so this initial height is 10 feet and you will have your ball at the tip of this height and then the path of the trajectory since that is from the horizontal 60 degrees it will have a trajectory looking like this one and eventually going down so this is the maximum height that the ball will reach we will have an axis at this point this is our y axis and our x axis let's say here we have an initial velocity is at i equal to 60 feet per second and it is launched at an angle of 60 degrees from the horizontal so this will have its horizontal component let's call it v sub i x and the vertical component here v sub i y at this moment when it will reach its maximum height the initial or the final velocity for it, when it will go up is equal to zero in the vertical component and the horizontal velocity here will still be equal to the initial velocity and at this point when it will reach the ground it will have its velocity final x equal to the initial velocity and of course it will have a final horizon vertical final vertical component when it, it when it will go down we are going co to consider negative gravitational acceleration when it will go down or when it will go up it we will consider negative gravitational acceleration when it will go down we will consider a neg a positive gravitational acceleration so this is going up and this is going down This is the maximum height each. And the maximum horizontal range. X max. Okay. So let us first look for the total time, total hang time, by first analyzing when the ball is going up. When it is going up, 
final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus a times t final velocity is equal to zero your velocity initial is equal to 60 feet per second times sine of 60 degrees feet per second if you will observe it is launch at an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the horizontal so the vertical component is 60, 60 sine of 60 plus negative 32.2 feet per second squared because that is going up and we will consider a negative gravitational acceleration and the time to go up so if you transpose this to the other side it will be negative 60 sine of 60 degrees divided by cross multiplying negative 32.2 feet per second squared leaving you with a time to go up the negative signs will cancel time to go up is now equal to 60 sine of 60 divided by 32.2 That is equal to 1.614 seconds. Now for the time to go down, final velocity, initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The final velocity is unknown because they are not on the same level. So let's go back to the formulas that can be used and determine whether what would be the solution for this problem. We need to find the final velocity. you will notice this formula will give us the final velocity if we know the initial velocity for the vertical component we know that this is equal to zero because it is going down and acceleration is known and we need to find first for the maximum height for the height from its maximum height going to the ground because we are co considering the other half of our figure. So let me just copy this image for you as your guide. She will go here. Okay. We need to find the height from this portion up to the maximum height reach. And let's call it y sub 1. Okay? So for y sub 1, this is using the analysis going up because we are considering that first part there this portion so going up or let's just move it here for us not to be confused So this could be using the second formula y equal to y sub o plus 
this pi which is equal to zero I have set time to go up zero because we are considering no this is zero, not zero that should be equal to 60 sine of 60 times of time to go up which is equal to one point six one four seconds plus one half of the acceleration due to gravity which is negative thirty two point two feet per second squared times the time to go up squared one point six one four squared and that should be this is by sub 1 positive because that is above a reference y sub 0 here this is our y sub 0 at elevation 0 and naturally this, is, this will be y sub 1 so going back we have y sub 1 is what we are looking for y sub 0 is simply 0 let's write it as 0 here y sub 1 is equal to 60 sine of 60 times 1.614 plus 1 half times negative 32.2 times 1.614 the quantity squared and that should be equal to 41.925 feet this is positive because that is above our reference point take note for the positions we are just considering positive and negative values as indicators of our position so if that is 41.925 and it is initially 10 feet above the ground the, ma the maximum height is already known so we can say that the maximum height is equal to 10 feet plus y sub 1 and that should be 51.925 since we know the maximum height, we can solve for the final velocity using the third equation. So the final velocity on the y component squared is equal to the initial velocity when it will go down. So we are analyzing it going down is 0 squared plus 2 times the gravitational acceleration and that is already positive because it is we are analyzing when the ball is going down it should be 32.2 feet per second squared and multiply that by the total height this is 51 0.925 feet why did we consider it the maximum height because we are analyzing from this position up to the ground so we need to analyze the vertical part from that position up to the ground this would be bf y is equal to the square root of this will cancel to 0 2 times 32.2 times 51.925 we are considering the absolute value here for the distance 
y max let's say we, we change the reference axis at this portion so we have our final velocity on the y component and that is the square root of 2 times 32.2 times 51.925 this should be equal to 57.827 feet per second and the final velocity on the x component should also be equal to 60 cosine of 60 degrees because we are not changing or there is no acceleration in the horizontal part of our projectile motion that is 60 cosine of 60 it should be equal to 30 feet per seconds continuing we now have the value for the final velocity on the horizontal component when it is going down so we can solve the time for it to go down okay so this would be 57.827 the final velocity when it will go down or considering the other half the second half of our projectile motion this is equal to the initial velocity of zero in the in the vertical axis plus positive 32.2 feet per second squared multiplied by the time to go down so we can solve for the time to go down that would be go down is equal to 57.827 divided by 32.2 and this is 1.796 seconds the total hang time is equal to the time to go up plus the time to go down and the time to go up going back from our solution is 1.614 plus the time to go down is 1.796 here you'll notice the time to go up and the time to go down is now not the same because their path is also not the same the time for it to go down is greater than the time for it to go up okay so the total hang time is now equal to 1.614 plus 1.796 that is equal to 3.41 seconds this is the total hang time second question would be for letter a maximum height h y max is already solved a while ago and that is equal to 51.925 feet and lastly the third required value is x max similarly since the for case 3 the time for it to go up is lesser than the time for it to go down naturally this portion here let's call it x sub up is lesser than x when it will go down it is not wrong to scale but the horizontal distance from this position okay this is it should be here This is the maximum. This would be the horizontal range 
x up and x down. So as to solve that, we will use concept of velocity. This is x sub up and the horizontal range when it will go down. So for x sub up, velocity is not changing. That is equal to the distance over time. x up is equal to vt up and x down is equal to vt down of course in the horizon the horizontal component of the velocity will be used and v sub x is equal to 60 cosine of 60 degrees that should be 30 feet per second there is no acceleration in the horizontal part of our projected motion so it remains the same all throughout the day duration of the motion so for x up this is equal to 30 feet per second time to go up is 1.614 seconds second will cancel out leaving us with 30 feet or 30 times 1.614 feet and that would be equal to 48.42 feet the horizontal range when it will go down from its maximum height would be equal to 30 feet per second multiply this by the time to go down is 1.796 seconds the second unit will cancel leaving us with 30 times 1.796 feet and this is equal to 53.88 feet so the total or the maximum horizontal range is equal to 48.42 plus 53.88 and that is equal to 102.3 feet and there you have it the three the three cases of projectile motion that is how you solve projectile motion as demonstrated in this video remember that for the vertical part we will use the free falling body analysis and for the horizontal part of our projectile motion we will always consider constant Velocity meaning there is no acceleration on the horizontal component. Thanks for watching. I hope that you learn a lot from this video. Thank you.